So I want to talk to you more about RSC curves because there's actually two types of RSC curves. There's a type of RSC curve for an individual model, and there's an RSC curve for an algorithm. And I'm going to talk about both of those, but I want to give you a little, little more intuition for the RSC curves for individual models before I move on to the ones for algorithms. Okay, so let's go over RSC curves and just give a different perspective on how to construct them. So as you know, we would take our model and run the decision boundary along the full range and get the true positive rates and false positive rates along the full range. So that's the same thing as like adjusting the dial uh, in terms of how sensitive it is to detecting a false positives versus detecting the true positives. And then we would take all those true positive rates and false positive rates and place them on a plot and then connect them all up and produce a um, ROC curve. Okay, so I want to, in order to give you a little bit more intuition about these ROC curves, I'm going to uh, not construct these curves with the scaling on the axes. So uh, here we have true positive rate and false positive rate. So instead of doing rates, I'm gonna get rid of the denominator and just do counts. And of course I can always recover the curve by just squishing the axes um, according to the denominator. So the curves, they stay the same, okay? They just, they're just scaled differently, okay? So here uh, I have true positives along the vertical axis and then false positives along the horizontal axis. So I'm counting positives going upward and I'm counting negatives going across. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'll take all of my function values and I'm gonna order the labels by those function values. Okay, so in this case, we had a particular observation where it, its true label is minus one, but it was predicted to have value, its f of x value is 15. Oh, okay, that's quite bad, <laughs> right? That, our, our highest ranking observation is actually a negative one. So that's the, the point we were the most con confident that it was positive, it's actually negative. All right, well, that happens sometimes. Okay, so those are my um, function values, and then those are the y values. And now I'm going to slide this decision boundary along the function values. And so, again, um, compute true positive and false positive. But instead of doing rates, I'm just going to do counts. Okay, so as I uh, start, I have zero positives and zero negatives because my classifier is all the way on the extreme. So then I'll move it over one rung and what I encounter is a negative. So I'm gonna go over to the right. Okay, then I find a positive, so great. Another positive, negative, positive, negative, 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 positive, negative. Now that is my unscaled ROC curve. So you can see that, um, you can see exactly how each point is contributing to the, to the curve itself. Okay, and then this is exactly what the RC curve is. Um, it's just that it's rescaled. And they look smooth just because you have a lot of data, but the truth is that this is actually what, what the RC curve is made of, okay? Now, if the function f is really good, so for instance, you have all the positives before all the negatives, then you go up in the world before you go over. Okay, great. Now, if f is really bad and the labels are randomly scrambled, then again, the number of true positives increases at the rate of the false positives increase, and so you might get something like this. And so the curves might go along the diagonal. And then in that case, sure, the area under the curve is 0.5, and that's not so good. That's not where you want to be. Okay. Um, now, I should mention that uh, there are algorithms that allow you to sort of optimize various types of areas under the curve, so different weighted areas under the curve, like you could choose an algorithm that particularly likes the top, the you know the the the, the topmost function values. Like you just want to make sure that your your highest predictions are correct, right? So in that case, you really care about the leftmost part of the RSC curve, as opposed to the whole area. Um, and so there are these algorithms that shift you from looking at the whole area to just looking at the top part of the curve. Okay. Uh, and in the next part, we will talk about RSC curves for algorithms.